Hi dear students, you are welcome in this video. Dear students, in this video we are going to talk about Sir Francis Bacon and his essay of revenge. I will explain the essay line by line and first we will discuss about his life and career. So, Sir Francis Bacon was one of the most important persons at that time. He was in the royal court of Queen Elizabeth I. So, let's understand his life and career first and then we will discuss the essay called of revenge. It is one of the very significant essays in whole uh, history of English literature and here uh, you see uh, he was born in London in 1561 and he was the son of Nicholas and Anne Bacon. Now his father was a royal person and he received honors from, from the uh, Queen Elizabeth I and uh, he was uh, the Lord Keeper to seal and hence he was uh, born in a prestigious family. So family background was a very prestigious of Sir Francis Bacon. Uh, dear students, he was educated at home due to his poor health. In his childhood, his health was not so good and hence he was educated at home but at the age of 12 he went to Trinity College and Cambridge so these two institutions are very prestigious institutions in the Western world and he was educated there in Trinity College and at Cambridge during the years uh, in Cambridge he met uh, for the first time Queen Elizabeth the first and she was impressed a lot by the talent of Sir Francis Bacon and she humorously uh, calls him as a young Lord Keeper so, this is what the Queen Elizabeth I calls uh, uh, Sir Francis Bacon, young Lord Keeper, because his father also was a Lord Keeper to seal. And uh, Sir Francis Bacon also is known as uh, Lord Verulam. So, this uh, you can say a nickname of Sir Francis Bacon. Uh, dear students, uh, let's uh, move forward and here you see, uh, he was died of pneumonia in 1626 uh, at Highgate outside London and basically the recognition of Sir Francis Bacon is as empirical and scientific temperament. So, he was the person or known for his empirical and scientific temperament. So, he gave us the scientific temperament. He gave in the western world a scientific, a scientific temperament, a logic and hence he is one of the most honored persons at that time. You see, he was most respected, honored, revered and despised figure of his time. So, all these adjectives show the place of Sir Francis Bacon in the Western world. And here we have a great poet called Alexander Pope. And Alexander Pope calls, or we have the words of Alexander Pope to Sir Francis Bacon. He says uh, to Sir Francis Bacon, the wisest, brightest, meanest of mankind. So these words are used by Alexander Pope to describe Sir Francis Bacon and the temperament of Sir Francis Bacon as wisest, brightest, brightest and meanest of mankind. And uh, dear students, Sir Francis Bacon is known for his essay writing and in essay writing he was developed a style called aphoristic style of writing or it is a kind of prose style aphoristic means a condensed and in that uh, style particularly you express in very brief words so this style has been developed by Sir Francis Bacon and hence he is called as the father of English essays. Now dear students, let's understand his some of important works. Basically Sir Francis Bacon composed essays and his essays are very famous and still we study his essays for different reasons and essays are prescribed in different institutions uh, in uh, your curriculum and syllabus. So here uh, he composed basically essays, essays first edition with 10 essays published in 1597, second edition of the essay published uh, with 38 essays in 1612 then we have third or final edition in which you find 58 essays published in 1625 today we are discussing his uh, essay called of revenge and in of revenge uh, uh, we find it is a small essay and this essay is taken from third or final edition in which you find 58 essays then fourth work he, we have here the advancement and proficience of learning divine and 
एंड ह्यूमन पब्लिश्ड इन 1605 एंड द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वर्क हियर वी हैव इन स्टार शो मैग्ना व्हिच इज पब्लिश्ड इन 1620 सो ऑल दीस वर्क्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट एंड दीस वर्क्स स्टिल टुडे prescribed for syllabus in different universities or in different institutions now dear students uh, here basically francis bacon's essays are very famous and uh, we are going to discuss his essay uh, called of revenge now uh, if you look at the title its title is very suggestive it is talking about uh, revenge and action which is taken against someone or this action may lead to destruction or even construction so both the things we are going to discuss because here now if you look at uh, the style it is aphoristic style and what is aphoristic it is expressing truth in fewest possible words so what uh, it is expressing it is expressing truth and hence he is called as the scientific person in literature and he developed a style called aphoristic style in which you find truth in fewest possible words now uh, the very beginning of uh, uh, the essay you find uh, it is revenge can be an act of justice but it's wild barbarous and uncivilized now if you look at the very first uh, sentence or the very first uh, statement uh, of revenge uh, re it begins with revenge is a kind of wild justice now here in this uh, statement you find paradox you find humor you also find uh, the contrast between the uh, two things now revenge he says that revenge is a kind of wild justice means there is justice but it is a wild justice now revenge how revenge can be a justice it's not possible that revenge can be a justice but here he is saying that it is a justice but wild kind of justice now revenge can be an act of justice but it's wild barbarous and uncivilized act and hence we can say that it is unlawful act it is a crime so revenge is an unlawful act and it is a crime so the same thing is explained by uh, sir francis bacon in his essay called of revenge and he says that it is an unlawful act and it is also a crime so no revenge in civil society if you look at the period of sir francis bacon Fra sir francis bacon was the contemporary of shakespeare and he belonged to the elizabethan period and that was a civil society and in civil society we find that there is no place for revenge or people cannot hold the uh, control of law or people cannot take law in their hands and hence he says that revenge is an act of crime so dear student in sir francis bacon's essays we find different types of uh, references and cross, cross references in of revenge we also have different types of references for example here you find king solomon is quoted from bible and he says it is the glory of a man to pass by an office so it is a very general nature of human being to offense or uh, to involve in an offense or do something wrong it is in the nature of man and hence uh, it is a basic instinct instinct and hence we cannot avoid it but for that should a man be punished so he answers this question next that which is past is gone and irrevocable and why is a man have enough to do with things present and to come now next he is explaining that we should not spend our time in the past things what happened is happened and past you cannot get back so once the things are gone the things gone so we should not repent on the past we should not uh, make the capital of the past and we should not dwell ourselves in the past but we should think about the present and hence it is better to think the present and not dwell into the past so this message is given by sir francis bacon so there is no man doth a wrong for the wrong sake and further he explains the nature of human beings that no person uh, do wrong for the wrong sake so there are reasons when a person does a wrong so what are those reasons for example he says that but thereby to purchase himself profit or pleasure or honor or the like now for these kind of things a person makes wrong or does wrong again he explains if done 
इफ ए पर्सन डूइंग हार्म टू समन एल्स वेरी इंटेंशनली देन He says that harming himself or herself, thorn or briar, prick and scratch. Now, if a person does wrong intentionally, if he harms someone else, then he is harming himself. Just he is uh, worsening his reputation in the society, and hence uh, the person becomes like a thorn or a briar who pricks in himself or herself. So this has been explained in of revenge by Sir Francis Bacon. Next, uh, let's understand uh, the next lines. The most tolerable sort of revenge. Now he is talking about different types of revenges. First, he talks about uh, revenge uh, as a kind of wild justice. He says that revenge can be justified. able but up to some extent if your revenge is constructive so always revenge cannot be destructive revenge may be constructive if uh, your revenge is constructive then it is justifiable up to some extent so he is explaining the kinds or types of revenge here you see uh, a tolerable sort of revenge is for those wrongs which there is no law to remedy but then let a man take heed the revenge be such as there is no law to punish else man's enemy still before hand and it is two for one now you can take revenge in some cases where you find there is no law to punish someone else at that time you can have revenge but that revenge must be constructive and not be destructive otherwise a person will caught in a situation where he will be uh, get harm from his enemy or the law from both the sides so this phrase two for one will explains that a person will uh, be He harm himself from his enemy and at the time from his law. So this is what two for one. Next he explains that this is the more generous. So this kind of revenge can be more generous. So how it can be more generous? If your revenge is positive, if it is in the right direction, if it is constructive, then it can be generous revenge. For the delight, see meth to be not so much in doing the hurt. so where is delight delight lies in not hurting the people if you are hurting the people so there is no delight there is no revenge if you are just satisfying the people and you are taking revenge uh, through an opposite means through a constructive means through positive means then it can be uh, delight as in making the party repent so you should take revenge such as the next party or opposite party should repent what they have done so this uh, kind of revenge you can have you can perform upon your enemies and friends too uh, then but base and crafty cowards are like the arrow that flieth in the dark now he is giving you a category of persons that there are many persons who are cowards and they don't think about this delight in the pardoning people in the uh, excusing people so pardoning people is a great thing according to sir francis bacon and we should pardon people we should excuse people from many things so again here we find a reference that cosmos duke of florence has a desperate saying against perfidious or neglecting friends as if those wrongs were unpardonable you shall read saith he that we are commanded to forgive our enemies but you never read that we are commanded to forgive our friends now here uh, we have a very bold statement it is commanded or it is written in the scriptures it is written in the text it is given in the bible that we should pardon our enemies but there is no word regarding friends treacherous friends disloyal friends the friends who deceive you that they should be punished so there is no word to forgive those friends but again sir francis bacon gives you the reference of job uh, from the same uh, text or same scripture that is bible he says that shall we say he take good at god's hands and not be content to take evil all so and so of friends in proportion now he says that if god has given you 
the good things he also given you some bad things or evil things that you should accept all those things good or evil and in the same way you if you are pardoning you are enemies then you should pardon your friends in the same proportion so dear students these are the last lines or last statements given by sir francis bacon in of revenge now what he says in the last statement or last line for example here we have a man that studieth revenge keeps his own wounds green now this is a very famous quotation if you are thinking all the time regarding revenge taking revenge or avenging someone then you are wounds or whatever you have received from that person will always continue in your mind so your wounds will be green so this is a very famous statement which otherwise would heal and do well if you forget whatever happened with you uh, by that person then uh, you will forget all the things you will forget to take revenge or you will forget the avenging that person so uh, if you are uh, just uh, thinking about revenge then your wounds will be green or they uh, the wounds will grow instead of healing and the last uh, lines here we have public revenge are for the most part fortunate now just he is justifying at some extent that public revenge can be justifying how just he is giving examples as that for the death of caesar for the death of pertinax for the death of henry the third of france and many more but in private so here we have distinction of public revenge and private revenge sometimes public revenge can be good and it can bring about some good for the public some good for the state some good for the nation or country but private anger is always dangerous and what he says regarding private anger or private revenge but in private revenge it is not so nay rather vindictive persons live the life of witches now if you are thinking in your mind regarding your own revenge you will obviously lead the life of witches just he is explaining who as they are mischievous so end they infortunate now what will happen you will end yourself in infortunate if you are practicing the private anger the private revenge so it is very clear that revenge is a harmful act revenge is unlawful revenge is a crime so we should not practice revenge on our own there is law we should abide law we should follow the laws sometimes the public revenge can be justifiable up to some extent because uh, it brings you the benefit it brings the society a benefit and uh, this is explained in the essay called of revenge so dear student this is all about the essay of revenge if you have any problem any, any query you can directly comment below in the comment section i will reply to your comments so thank you very much please subscribe our channel and watch videos on literature simply